Welcome to the Geek Home World. I am your host, Savage Tech Man. We talk sci fi, TV, movies, superheroes, and all from a geek perspective. You can find us on Blogger, Google, Twitter, Facebook, we're everywhere. Join the Geek Home World. It's time for our fall TV preview. I've uh, been looking forward to this. It's been a great summer, but looking forward to getting back into all of our favorite shows here in the geek home world that we enjoy. And uh, I'm going to go down the list here by release date so that all the new seasons are coming out. First we have is Gotham. And that is coming this Monday, uh, September 21st. It's coming out. And we're going to see basically a rise of the villains. It's the Joker, the Penguin, Victor Zaz. They're all going to be just leading the, the troop there against James Gordon and everyone else. And it's going to be another fascinating, very gripping season as the last couple seasons have been of that, of Gotham. So basically... We're going to see the beginnings of the Batcave here, and I doubt we'll see a young Batman. We'll never see Bruce Wayne put on a bat suit or whatever, and it, it'll, it'll just be uh, interesting to see how it goes. It's good television. It's more character-driven than... It's kind of like the Smallville of Gotham, I guess. <laughs> That's probably a bad analogy there, but it's it's basically to that extent... You're never going to really see Batman doing his thing. Uh, there are some shows that are coming up on Netflix. Uh, Daredevil's going to be on there. And uh, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, and The Defenders on Netflix is coming. We just enjoyed a great season of Humans, and that's coming back in the fall for a second season. Mr. Robot, which was so intense and mind-bending, uh, it will also be back for a second season. Of one of our other shows coming September 21st, debuting, is The Big Bang Theory coming back. And this first episode is going to be the wedding episode with Leonard and Penny. And no doubt it's going to be a great wedding. It's going to be fun. It's going to be an excellent episode. So looking forward very much to The Big Bang Theory coming back this Monday. Another show that's actually starting, and that's um, these are Eastern Standard Time zones in the U.S., so Gotham is on Fox. It's going to be debuting at 8 p.m. Big Bang Theory, of course, on CBS at 8 p.m. Minority Report is coming on Fox, and it's debuting after Gotham, so you couldn't ask for a better time slot for a new show to prove itself. And Minority Report, which is on Fox, coming on at 9 p.m. Monday, September 21st, is based upon the Tom Cruise movie that I think is a classic. Basically, you have these, what they call precogs, and they're precognition people that can see and predict crimes before they happen. And if the show is anything like the movie Minority Report, I think it's going to be a, a big hit. And I look forward to, to seeing it, to see how, how well it, it fleshes out there. But Minority Report, 9 o'clock debut. Going ahead to Thursday, September 24th, here's a show I've been... I love the original. I love season one. Didn't like season two as much. Then season... I think it did a season three kind of lost me there but heroes there was the original show and you've been hearing a lot of promotion about it this one is called heroes reborn and it's kind of a reboot of sorts i guess you could say and it picks up if you remember the original heroes right after claire announced that she had powers and i'm sure nobody can remember back that far in fact i need to go back and i may actually own season one of it on like dvd that just tells you how long ago that was and I want, I want, I believe that this is going to be occurring around 2006 in the storyline, if my memory serves me correctly on that. Obviously, there's no Zachary Quinto attached to it, 
a cameo from him would be awesome, but I'm not expecting him to come back as Siler. And it's basically a new cast, a younger cast. But the one of the main things that this series will work on is being in the spirit of season one, the first and best season of the show. That it was intense, and you didn't know what was happening. I've heard some people refer to it as X Men. Basically, it is, or an X Men first class to an extent. You know, it's these kids with their adolescence getting their powers and all that. And I'm trying to think to season two. If you remember season two of the original Heroes show, it was cut very short. It was like half of the episodes that that it would have had uh, due to, I think it was a union writer's strike, if I can remember. It's something to that effect. But it mainly focused on Hero and... I still love that character, and everything that came after that was kind of way off-center from the focus of Season 1, so it'll be interesting to see, you know, we've got some original characters coming back, and like Claire's father's coming back, obviously, he's still got the glasses too, but a little updated look, and it's going to be interesting to see how it pans out. Tuesday, September 29th, we have Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. on ABC, coming at 9 o'clock. Oh, and by the way, in case I did not say, just to backtrack, 8 p.m. Thursday, September 24th is Heroes Reborn on NBC. That's uh, Thursday, September 24th on NBC at 8 p.m. Tuesday, September 29th is Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. at 9 p.m. And we're basically going to see more of Coulson and his team and if you want to just break it down, it's the Inhumans headed up by Sky, and they'll dominate the season. And I'm sure there'll be plenty of surprises, of course. And and you're going to see Sky in her full costume, and she's going to be using her powers. So Inhumans versus humans, and Coulson's team's kind of in the middle of everything, just trying to keep the peace. And Agents of Shield, the first season was spectacular. The second season, there were parts of it in the middle it dragged it's a show that's consistent but it's i still like it because it's marvel and i still love agent colson sky gets on my nerves a lot but last season got interesting and all in with uh sky's father and everything and and her mother finding out who her mother was was also interesting but i don't know at times i have to labor through this show but I still love it. I still, I'm still interested to see where it goes. I think they've kind of tightened things down. You remember before in like season two, they were doing the whole telepath thing, and then just pretty much after Captain America came out, Winter Soldier, they pretty much just dropped that whole storyline and just kind of did some rewriting, backtracking, kind of sleek the show down, and they brought in um, who used to be Commander Adam Home Battlestar Galactica. They brought him in. <laughs> And, and actually, his character was pretty good till he, he kind of got killed by Sky's mom. But anywho, looking forward to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. coming back 9 p.m. Uh, Tuesday, September 29th. We're going ahead to October 6th, which is a Tuesday, for the next show that I'm really excited about. Season 1 was about as good as I think you could do for a pilot series. But on the CW, coming Tuesday, October 6th at 8 p.m., the season two premiere of The Flash with Grant Gustin. Basically, when we left it off, the reverse Flash was defeated. Quote unquote, I guess you could say. I have a feeling we'll somehow see him because Barry enters that portal wormhole kind of thing. And he's smashing all the time in reality barriers and the alternate universes and we're gonna probably see various versions of different flashes. So that singularity, we're going to wonder how Barry managed to live through that. And we're looking at Eobard Thawne. Is he supposed to be erased from existence now? And are they going to keep that in the continuity? Is he gone? Is he going to be back? Tom Cavanaugh is supposed to make an appearance in this season. So will he come back as his original character? Or, you know, what's going what's to happen there is he going to be Harrison Wells, the real Harrison Wells? I don't know how. But when you when you deal with time travel, you know, you, you play with all these different paradoxes, so things can change, and they can change pretty quick. So from what I'm seeing on the net, that uh, Grant Gustin basically said that, that it's going to be, this season of The Flash is going to be more like the comic books, 
In fact, they will be getting more into his powers. Barry's going to be pushing himself even farther. And like I said, you know, he tried to close that wormhole that was going to destroy Central City. But we'll see what happens. And it was really spectacular, that the, the ending of that. The executive producer who's behind Arrow and The Flash, obviously, and has done the crossovers, Greg Berlanti. And you've got Jeff Johns, who did some producing on that, too. They were talking about how we're going to see Wally West. And in season two, that's going to be a great thing. We're also going to see Jay Garrick. And if you remember, he's the original Flash. And his helmet came through the wormhole. And he is basically the counterpart from, I believe, the Silver Age of comics, as they call it. So there's a lot going on. Flash Season 2. It's just going to be amazing. And another show that's coming the next night, uh, Wednesday, October 7th, is debuting its fourth season, is Arrow on CW also, and it's coming on at 8 p.m. And just some of the highlights, they are going to have Batman's villain Anarchy is coming to Season 4 of Arrow, so that's going to be interesting. We're going to see Diggle getting this helmet, and he's got a uniform, and it looks pretty badass. And one of our big main story arc villains this whole season four will be Damian Dark. And Neil McDonough plays Damian Dark, and he's involved with the agency called Hive that's been giving Team Arrow a lot of trouble there and towards the end of the season, and they're definitely going to be doing that. You're also going to see a, a person on there called Mr. Terrific coming to the show, and this version of his character is actually, he will be a gay character, a gay man on, on the show, and he is a friend of Felicity's. Ray Palmer, you know, is the Adam, which worked out better than I thought. At first, I wasn't sure about the suit, but it worked out pretty well, I think. Um, he's going to be starring in his own Legends of Tomorrow spinoff that's going to have... Diff- Captain Cold's going to be probably be one of the standout characters from that. You're also going to have Sarah Lance somehow. <laughs> Don't know how, considering that she was dead, how she's going to be in that, but we'll see. Okay, moving right along. Sunday, October 11th, The Walking Dead on AMC at 10 p.m. Basically, you got Rick and his crew, which is Daryl, Michonne, Carol, and a a few more. (laughs) They were having this big confrontation in the town of Alexandria, and uh, Rick had to kill somebody, uh, and he convinced the townspeople, pretty much, or that's what he's about to do, that they have to fight. They can't just hide behind the walls there. And the wolves are going to be giving more trouble this season, you know, Morgan returned, and my question is, is he going to be good or is he going to be bad? How has, you know, Morgan's experiences changed him? Is, is is he going to truly be changed? Will he be good? Will he be bad? And will Gabriel stop being a jerk now that Sasha's beaten some sense into him? I want to know the answer to that. And I guess as long as you don't kill off Daryl, Carol, and my favorite on the series, which is Michonne, if you let him live... AMC or the powers that be that make The Walking Dead, I will definitely keep watching. Monday, October 26th will be the premiere of Supergirl on CBS at 8.30 p.m. And I'm interested to see this show myself. Of course, obviously, I'm a Superman fan, but Supergirl's interesting, too. I love how they did Supergirl's Kara zor on Smallville. And it, it looks like this version of, of, of Supergirl, she's going to be very lighthearted with some humor, which will be good. There'll be talk of Superman, Kara's cousin, uh, but he's not going to appear on the show. The pilot, you know, already leaked online months ago, and I haven't heard really any negative feedback about it, so that's a good sign. I, I think this will be fun. Plus, she wears the suit, and she uses her powers, unlike 10 years of Smallville that we spent waiting for the suit. But I still will always love Smallville, and Tom Welling's portrayal of Clark Kent was still awesome and gonna still enjoy that so that's uh coming up and that about wraps it for this segment here so let us know uh via our twitter at geek home world let us know um what you think what, what shows you're looking forward to i didn't talk about doctor who i didn't talk about limitless on here there's some other shows coming and i know there's some fans out there for those shows so hit us up on our social media and let us know at geek home world 
Homeworld Review Preview. I'm joined here with friend of the podcast, Jerry, and my constant companion in life and on the podcast, my wife, Cheryl. And we, <laughs> we just... Welcome, guys. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Hello. Oh, <laughs> just making sure you're there. I'm there. <laughs> okay. Uh, so if you have not seen the movie Everest, we're about to review it in this segment, and I'm calling major spoiler alert on this particular segment. So Yeah, turn off the podcast now. You can come back and listen to it after you've seen it, because listening to us will not be the same thing as watching it. Not <laughs> even close. <laughs> Uh, we saw it in IMAX 3D, which is really the only way to see 3D. So uh, let's discuss, guys. What are your thoughts on IMAX? I'm going to kick it off and say, and I never say this about an IMAX 3D movie, but I wasn't terribly impressed with the 3D. Now, you always like 3D, and I it has to take a lot to impress me. I didn't feel like it had to be 3D. No, it didn't need to be 3D. There wasn't a whole lot... You but I think, that. yeah, I think that seeing it in the, the big IMAX screen was great. Right. And seeing in the, the panoramic the, views. And yes. the sound that you get. But it just didn't need to be 3D. Yeah. Right. So so save your money maybe on the on the 3D, even though we thought this was a movie we had to see in IMAX 3D. No, I 3D. think if you have access yeah. to see it in, in IMAX, see it in IMAX, even if that means seeing it in 3D. Right. It doesn't hurt it. It just no. doesn't necessarily enhance it. it. Right, right, right. It's more the atmospheric kind of 3D. Uh, let's see, it had a rating of uh, PG-13. Yeah, and I was reading about that because it doesn't have, you know, obviously everybody's in snowsuits the whole time, so there isn't any any uh, <laughs> gratuitous nudity or no. sex scenes, and there really isn't any language. language that would know? have been odd. <laughs> But some of the injuries were a little graphic. And it was very, like, scary at points, like when they're hanging over a crevasse and you're looking deep down into a ravine. Yes. Right. And then once it started getting into the real accident and everything that happened, and this, of course, is based on a true story, for those of you who don't know that, in 96. Um, But once it gets into that, there's like, it felt to me like 30 minutes straight of adrenaline pumping in my heart, (laughs) worrying about... What was happening? It was a very good movie. It was. It's definitely uh, keeps you on the edge of your seat. And once it once it really gets going, it, it seems to. And and you say that um, it's well documented the story. Well, that's like I said, it is based on a true story. And um, and actually, one of the characters in the film is a journalist, John Krakauer, who also wrote the book Into the Wild. Um, and he wrote a book about this incident called Into Thin Air. So that was the first book written. And then one of the guys who was in his book, right. who didn't like what he wrote, wrote his own book. And so eventually, <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> eventually there were seven books written. Uh, it's um, about this experience. Exactly. Yes. And then there was one book, uh, one TV movie made based on John Krakauer's book Into Thin Air. And then there was a documentary done about it. And then there was an IMAX film already documentary done about it because they were filming the IMAX documentary during this. During this. And so wow. the, the crew on the IMAX film were actually helping with the rescue efforts during this incident. So, so and then this movie. So there have been altogether four films, including right. two documentaries, <laughs> seven books. I don't know how many articles and websites and, and whatever. So... You know, if you haven't heard about this story before, I don't know where you've been for the last, like, almost 20 years. I believe I've even read a short version of it in the Reader's Digest. (laughs) Probably for John Krakauer (laughs) from the article he wrote for Outside Magazine. If you haven't heard it, you were probably on Everest. (laughs) (laughs) Unfortunately, you still are. (laughs) You're still on Everest. Well, that's a little gruesome. (laughs) I'm sorry. It is. I'm sorry. Well, that's what you didn't know once you got Everest. If you die on Everest, they don't bring you down. No. It's It's too too dangerous, yeah. Just like the helicopter that had to fly up there, and, and the air was so thin, I didn't, I didn't, I've forgotten that point or not known that because they probably taught that in school in physics, and I wasn't paying attention. But uh, <laughs> I'm sure they taught it in pilot school. <laughs> well, and that was yes. definitely one of the um, the scariest moments yes, was the helicopter was. scene. Um, you really didn't know what was going to happen there, especially when they left. Yes, especially. It was almost so like the think, Star Wars ride right. at Disney. <laughs> <laughs> and so you think, you know, okay, he's landed, and so whew, everything's good. But then, no, not everything isn't good yet. It's not good yet until, yeah. We don't want to give away too much. Yes. 
It kind of reminds me of Superman Returns when Lex Luthor's escaping <laughs> and, and the helicopter and it goes down and you think it's gone and then it, it comes up. And, uh, they do Not that. that that happens this time. Not that this happens this <laughs> time. There is no Lex Luthor in this no film, Lex just Luthor. to be clear. So, Jerry, what were some of your thoughts about Everest? Well, talking about just the whole hobby, if you want to call it, of mountain <laughs> climbing, I've had this theory for a long time. It's very irresponsible and selfish to have a hobby that can kill you. There were people that had families, pregnant wives, and other children, you know, school children that they were trying to uh, inspire. And Mm -hmm. what if something happened? Yeah, I hadn't thought about the, uh, the one who was actually climbing, who had children he was like they were taking a picture of him to right. send back to the kids who helped to sponsor him yeah the i didn't even think about and all that. that yeah and so at least the pic the picture got back then because that guy got down the mountain that took the picture i think no he didn't no so no. <laughs> how do spoiler we, how do i know he actually i don't know maybe mistaken. they did find the camera i don't know because i wondered about that i i had at the end you know as they usually do in these kind of true life films they show the pictures of the real people and i had expected that it was going to be that photo right and they didn't show it so they i don't didn't. know well, from the expertise i mean or or my lack of expertise i don't know uh, in radio communication they had pretty sturdy um, radios there and phones that always seemed to have a good charge on them. <laughs> well, I was impressed by the battery out. power on their I was just thinking that, too. We have radios like that at work. Yeah. And they can reach a couple of miles, but I think those radios were reaching a good bit further. Yeah. Well, I mean, they did say, no, this was almost 20 years ago, and they said that the cost, because what it, what it was, the two main characters who were um, played by Jake Gyllenhaal and Jason Clark, and we can talk some more about them, but those mm-hmm. two characters were leading sort of tourist groups up yeah. to Mount Everest, and they turned it into right. a business because not too many years before this, the only people who went up were professional climbers, but now they turn it into a tourist industry, and they did say that it cost $65,000 if you wanted to go with them. Right. right. So they could Her afford person. to get yeah. really good yeah. radios, and they had yes. satellite phones and and all of that but and and it is documented that those, these phone calls did take place and these radio calls did take place so they do so. they did have good radios with good battery packs I guess yes uh, Landsat or something <laughs> <laughs> I should have been carrying around in bags it's definitely like not what I've used at work because those will barely yeah. get through a two hour event yeah. <laughs> I can barely get 4G in a sea in the world if I'm my, bad my that. phone hardly gets through the day so we, we th- felt I think collectively that this was a well written movie a well acted movie um, we had, uh, as you said, Jake Gyllenhaal and Jason Clark, who was in um, Dawn of the Planet of the Apes and uh, Just Terminator, Terminator Genesis, Genesis, which was awesome. And so John, he's been busy the last been, couple yeah, of years. He's been yeah. very busy. He's a lot films. of movies, um, all, all told. Yes, he has. Uh, and, of course, Josh Brolin, who played Beck in the movie. You know, not, I'm going to say, I think Josh Brolin, actually, because they were all great, mm-hmm. and, yes. and they were all great characters that they played, but I think he did the best job. I really thought that he had the he best did. role and he did the best. I don't know. I take and, that well, back. Jake then, Gyllenhaal. Jake, Jake Gyllenhaal, Gyllenhaal was great too. He was. He was great and, and he was the kind of laid back guy where, where um, Jason Clark was the more by the rules guy. And, Except for he's the one that ended up breaking the rules. At the end, yeah. And, well, and, I mean, he was laid back in a way but in a way he was more hardcore. He said it. If you can't make it up the mountain on your own, then you don't need Without to be on oxygen. the mountain. Yeah, yeah. That, that's very true, and and, and and there's an argument for that, too. Josh Brolin, of course, also plays Thanos in Avengers, the whole saga. So, uh, yeah, and he's been, of all, of, all of these guys are pretty seasoned, and I think... Yes. Um, and what amazed me is most of the people in this, and the, the, you know, their ages were in their 40s and their the 50s. The people who were climbing, and, yeah. Yeah, these were older people, and, you know, some of the... The younger folk, like when they pass the kids in the village at one of those, on the way up to one of those base camps. The, and the kids who kids live are, in the... That live in that high altitude or are accustomed to it. It's like probably living in Denver versus living in Kansas or someplace, mm-hmm. you know. The altitude difference, you get used to it somewhat. So, um, 
Asking everybody around the table, we'll start with you, Cheryl. Would you recommend the movie? I think you should definitely go see it. Now, I personally really love the IMAX documentary film. And so, you know, for me, I was looking for a little bit more of that IMAX experience, which I shouldn't have been. This is a dramatic film. Right. But I was, there were a lot of really good scenes like that, but I would have, I really wanted more of that. Now I want to see the IMAX documentary. And yeah, they should re release that. It's got to be played be somewhere. I'm sure. I'm we sure need to find a, 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 a for download, I'm sure. An somewhere. aquarium IMAX somewhere, a planetarium <laughs> IMAX somewhere that's playing it because it's really excellent. Yes. So I would say it's really good. Don't go in there expecting it to be an IMAX documentary with lots right. of the scenery it's in there but there's a lot of story and i liked how too. they wrapped it up at the end and you know they showed you what happened to the characters and especially the girls that was named good, Sarah, yeah. yeah and how she was you know at the end she was the last thing you see so jerry would you recommend it yes I, I would recommend it. it was a very good movie yeah it was it was i, I certainly recommend it so we all agree you definitely should see it, and you should definitely see it on the big screen. Even though we had our, a few misgivings about the IMAX and the 3D, it's something to be experienced in 3D. Yeah, and I think the better the sound quality in the theater... Oh, the yes. sound was excellent. Yeah, yes. because the, the music really drives some of that yes. carol. And you did feel immersed in the movie. You yeah. felt like you were on Everest. I literally came out of the IMAX theater and said, I feel like I should be cold. Yeah, right <laughs> we walked outside and was like, oh my gosh, I'm surprised it's yeah, hot out here. <laughs> exactly. But I also think you should not wait for the Blu-ray, and for goodness sake, don't watch this thing on your computer screen or your telephone, people. No. Go to the movie theater. Big yes. screen, big screen all the way. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I want to thank you, Cheryl and Jerry, for joining us for this segment. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Geek Homeworld Podcast with your host, Savage Tech Man. You can find us on Libsyn, Google+, follow us on Twitter, like us on Facebook, listen to us on iTunes, see us on YouTube, be part of our Mixler chats. Thank you. See you again on the Geek Home World Podcast. Oh, wow.